as some of you will know, I grew up just a few miles from Stratford-upon-Avon, birthplace of William Shakespeare. I visited the town recently on my holiday, and even though I've lived in the area for many, many years, I'd never actually visited the resting place of William Shakespeare, Holy Trinity Church in the town. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing photos and also information about the church, and I do hope you'll enjoy it. Holy Trinity Church is situated in the Old Town area on the banks of the River Avon and not far from the Royal Shakespeare Theatre and the Swan Theatre. It's a beautiful building. The oldest part of the church, the Crossing, has four pillars which support the church tower and spire and which date back to 1210. However, people have been worshipping on the site since 713. Other features include the Misericords. These are 26 carved wooden seats found on each side of the chancel and which date back to the 1400s and which depict scenes from medieval life, including a man and woman fighting. The chancel. Here you'll find the resting places of William Shakespeare, his wife Anne Hathaway, their eldest daughter Susanna, and their grandson-in-law Thomas Nash. On the wall are copies of the register entries of the baptism and death of Shakespeare from the parish records and the font in the chancel would have been used to baptise Shakespeare in 1564. Shakespeare and his family were buried in the chancel area because Shakespeare was a lay rector at the church and had purchased church land. There is also a bust of William Shakespeare on the wall, which dates back to 1623 and which was erected by his widow Anne and his family and friends. The chained Bible on display in the chancel dates back to 1611. Another feature of interest in the church is the pre-Reformation stone altar, which was found buried beneath the floor. It had been hidden to protect it during the purges of the Reformation. Then there's the chapel of Thomas Becket, which was dedicated by John de Stratford, Archbishop of Canterbury in 1331. Then the Clopton Chapel. Here, visitors will find the elaborate tomb of Joyce Clopton, who died in 1635, and her husband, George Carew, Earl of Totnes, who died in 1629. Carew served in Ireland under Elizabeth I and she appointed him President of Munster. He was also James I's Master of Ordnance, and this office is symbolised by the cannon depicted on his tomb. This tomb is said to be the finest Renaissance tomb in all England, and yet I was very shocked to hear some um, tourists uh, standing at the tomb and saying just how tacky and gaudy it was. I did feel like giving them a little bit of a shake. <laughs> Then there's the Sanctuary Knocker. The knocker on the inner porch door dates from the 1200s and anyone touching the ring could claim sanctuary at the church for 37 days. And finally, the American window. Americans will be interested in this window, the American window of St. Peter's Chapel, which was unveiled in 1896 at a special service attended by the American ambassador and which is inscribed the gift of America to Shakespeare's church. The church is open to the public, but visitors who want to enter the chancel to see Shakespeare's tomb are charged about two pounds to meet the costs of maintaining the building. There are some useful information posters dotted around the church, for example, information on Shakespeare's baptism and his funeral, and also what his wedding would have been like, although there's controversy about where his wedding actually took place and it's thought not to have been at Holy Trinity. There's also a bookshop with various Shakespeare and Tudor goodies, as well as religious works. 
I do hope you enjoyed those photos. I'm going to leave you today with the epitaph from Shakespeare's tomb, which he's said to have written himself. Good friend, for Jesus' sake forbear, to dig the dust enclosed here. Blessed be the man that spares these stones, and cursed be he that moves my bones. Bye bye.